Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then they entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Children made 
Psalm 118, beginning on page 760 of the Book of Common Prayer, we will recite verses 1 and 2, and then 19 through 29 of Psalm 118, Confitimini Domino. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. And have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. Form a procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Glory, Glory to, to the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The 
The first lesson this morning is a reading from the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 through 9a. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he awakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. Is it the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. The second lesson this morning, the epistle, is from Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Mark. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes in the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man named Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowds came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into the crowd, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon it, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to be crucified. They compelled, compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide which each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabbatani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come down to take him. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that it was in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son. The Gospel of the Lord.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Palm Sunday in the church of my youth was always a day of celebration, the day reserved annually for the rite of confirmation. We waved palms and sang festive songs of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, including the one with which we as children could identify, Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children sang. Through pillared court and temple, the lovely anthem rang. To Jesus, who had blessed them close folded to his breast, the children sang their praises, the simplest and the best. Palm Sunday was a day of triumph and hope, without thought of the shadows that would soon dominate that fateful week which we set apart as holy, at least not for me as a child. As I recall, the only puzzling aspect of Palm Sunday to my innocent mind was how Jesus knew where there would be a cult that had never been written and why he would tell his disciples to take it without asking permission. It seemed magical and I suppose a little bit subversive. Decades later, after the church decided in its wisdom to read the Passion narrative on Palm Sunday, since many of its members could not be counted on to attend the services of Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, I'm afraid we've lost sight of the meaning of Jesus' Palm Sunday entrance into Jerusalem. Today it is on that parade into Jerusalem that I invite you to reflect. Marcus Borg and John Dominic Crossan write, in the last week, two processions entered Jerusalem on a spring day in the year 30. It was the beginning of the week of Passover, the most sacred week of the Jewish year. One was a peasant procession, the other an imperial procession. From the east, Jesus rode a donkey down the Mount of Olives, cheered by his followers. Jesus was from the peasant village of Nazareth. His message was about the kingdom of God and his followers came from the peasant class. On the opposite side of the city from the west, Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, entered Jerusalem at the head of a column of imperial cavalry and soldiers. Jesus' procession proclaimed the kingdom of God. Pilate's proclaimed the power of empire. It was the standard practice of the Roman governors of Judea to be in Jerusalem for the major Jewish festivals. They did so not out of empathetic reverence for the religious devotion of their Jewish subjects, but to be in the city in case there was trouble. There often was, especially at Passover, a festival that celebrated the Jewish people's liberation from an earlier empire. Understanding the context we see that there was nothing romantic or naive about Jesus' triumphal entry into the clogged streets of Jerusalem. In fact, it might be better characterized as a highly symbolic and provocative act of street theater that dramatized his mission. He didn't ride a donkey because he was too tired to walk or because he wanted a better view of the onlookers. He deliberately chose this means of entry to embody the ancient words of the prophet Zechariah. Look, your king is coming to you, gentle and riding on a donkey on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Unlike the Roman Empire that used a show of force to keep the peace and maintain the privilege of the powerful, the kingdom of God proclaimed by Jesus' counter-procession is characterized by peace through justice for even the least among us. 
thinking about the scene, you can almost imagine how it would be depicted by cable news today as class warfare. As we know, for many who shouted, Hosanna, literally, save us, it was just that. Like us, it was hard for them to follow a savior who identifies not only with the innocent victims of the world, in whose company we all like to number ourselves, but also with their torturers. As Jesus enters Jerusalem in peace, in fulfillment of the Christmas prophecies sung by the angels to the shepherds and in premeditated contrast to the Roman governor, we who carry our palms are invited to have this same mind as Christ. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd, fearing the reaction of the Roman forces to an act of political defiance, asked Jesus to tell his disciples to stop. But the truth must be told about Jesus. If his disciples were to be stifled, the stones beneath their feet will cry out the good news. And here at this juncture is where the story of two processions long ago impacts our lives. Will we be among those who praise Jesus or those who seek to silence the praise? Will we be among those who want to maintain the status quo that passes for peace at the expense of those who live on the margins? Or will we cast our lot with the Prince of Peace who identifies with the vulnerable by walking the way of self-emptying love in a world that is always suspicious, suspicious of such people. The road to Jerusalem is not much different today than it was 2,000 years ago. We are still surrounded by situations that beg for solutions, but as a people we lack the conviction that all of us in this world belong to one another. The earth turns warmer and more vulnerable by the day. Racism, sexism, and homophobia destroy families and poison relationships. The powerful pay fewer taxes. The national infrastructure decays. Fundamentalist groups and governments across the globe seek to suppress opposition, to deny questions, to resist change. Our political dialogue has been shouted down by stridency from both the right and the left. We are still on the road to Jerusalem, aren't we? Into this mix of struggle and tension, of cultural divides, global unsureties, and dogmatic certainties comes Jesus. He weeps over our failures to live justly entrusting ourselves and our security to God, just as he wept over Jerusalem then. He comes to us who are not quite sure what to do with the palms that we hold today, and bids us spread them on his path as a symbol of our willingness to make Christ's way of selfless love the path we will walk in our lives. He comes to us despite our hesitancy to surrender ourselves to this dangerous, subversive way of living and invites us once more to abandon the path that has been found wanting, that says the only way to security is by might and fear. He bids us seek the peace that passes all human understanding, the peace that excludes no one, the peace to which the stones beneath our feet will bear witness if we do not. From palm branches to Passover, to passion, to peace, we celebrate it all today. May we find the courage, the passion, and the peace to be those disciples who understand and cry out the good news of Jesus Christ with words of praise and acts of love. 
Amen. Amen. We affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace, 
and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning are given in Form 3, appearing on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those for whom continuing prayer has been requested, including Ron Mishko and family, Suzanne and family, Theodora DeBaz, Fran Myers and family, Liz Russo, Roland Devere II, Robert and Jean Wallace, Janet, Jody and Juan, Brian Flory, Andy and family, Jim Pender, Jane, and for all who suffer from any grief or trouble, and for the victims and their families of the shootings in Atlanta and in Boulder. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to Jackie and Marie, Bill and Paul, and all the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Good day and welcome to St. Christopher's. Welcome especially as we enter into the solemn, most solemn week of the church year, the week we know as Holy Week. Today's service is the introduction, but we will also direct you to services you can participate in on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, the Easter Vigil, and of course, via <clears throat> digital means on Easter Sunday through uh, service from Trinity Cathedral. Check your Thursday news and notes for links to all of these services and come join us, walk this way with Christ for what begins today and leads to the cross will surely lead us with him 
to new life and resurrection and glory. Thank you for being with us and God bless you through this week.